Hello everybody and welcome again to today's tutorial. Today we're working on part two of our Thor um in our Thor tutorial series. And today we're going to actually be working on the code and the save and load system and all of those stuff. Now first things first we're going to just go to our global since we're running out of time already. So we're just gonna I'm gonna paste this line on this block of code over here. So I'm just gonna explain what all this does. So this var store, okay, this variable is actually going to be what um, our store is actually going to have, like everything when we buy something, the store variable will, will be updated. So now this is for the same on the system from down here, from where my cursor is, from down to the end of the load store is actually going to be the same on load system. So this variable is um, a variable that I use to this is actually the path where my where my game is actually going to be saved so if you want to see that path you can just go over here to project um, open project data folder well I already have a file saved so I'm going to delete it sorry I'm going to delete it so this is actually the path now well, I'm using the 3.2, but if you're using a an earlier version, you can also go down here and search here. I'm just gonna put a um, link to it now on screen. So this is actually gonna be the path for. Okay, this is gonna be the path for um for your game for your game saves. Okay, when you save the game, this is the path where it's gonna save it in. So I'm just gonna exit that and I'm gonna save it. So this user now is like all that stuff. Then this save, you can name this whatever you want. You can just name it something like blah 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 and stuff like that. But I just want it to remain as save. And here in the save function, what it's gonna do is actually gonna make a new file open the file and try to write something in it then save the file okay the store um the save save the store variable in that file and then close the file then when you load the file it's actually going to make another file and check if that file exists already so if it exists sorry if it doesn't exist it's going to return and not going to go through these other parts of the code but if it exists it just passes it and says and open the file, read what is inside and put what and put the store variable according to whatever is in the file. Um and close the file and return. So maybe um somehow what I just said didn't really make some sense. So just hear it again and again and I think it start making some sense. Well I think that's all I can explain for the save and load system. Now we want to go to our store.gd. So here we're going to be actually doing some um, pretty basic stuff. So in the store, we're going to make a um, process function and we're going to just be saying this cache over here, the cache.txt should be equal to um let's say cash plus global global dot score okay so that's pretty much all okay and mistakenly I forgot something um I meant to actually add a string string function in front of this and that should be good so I want to actually be going to my game and back here so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna say if input dot is p first you don't actually have to do this code um, write this particular line of code that I'm writing you can actually have a button that goes to your game scene but since I don't have that I'm not so privileged I decided to do this so I'm going to get underscore tree, the change scene, 
um, to my game so. Yeah, that should be all and I'm going to copy this guy Copy him and put him over here in our game saying we well, already have him anyways So, um, the, we just go ahead and copy that Okay, so here I made a label um, the GD, I think I didn't tell you this in the first tutorial video Well, um, I just passed this label to my other friends over here Which are the other skins we have So each skin has its own label And I just gave it that script Okay, so the script um, is going to be just named label the GD And here we're going to be exporting a variable So you say export uh huh. I'm gonna be exporting an integer variable, and we're gonna say bar price. So this is gonna export the price variable, and we're gonna say font underscore ready. Um, we want price. Sorry, we want our text to be equal to price. Okay, and before I forget again, string. Um, add that string in front of it so that it won't have a complaint. So, um, over here in each level variable, in each level node, I'm just gonna go ahead and manipulate the script. So, I'm gonna give this guy a 10 so that I can easily buy him without stress and give this guy a 20. It's pretty much basic stuff here for the first time. And here we're going to actually be getting those prices. So we're going to be making variables. Well, I'm going to make it on, on the ready. And the variables are going to be price 2. Okay, so we're making this variable as price 2 because it's actually on the second panel. Where is it? Yeah, it's on the second panel. So I just felt like making it, um, having that kind of name convention. So we're going to set it to. We're gonna get that node actually. So where is it? Okay, panel two dot label dot text. Well, if we try to check this out now, um, because we'll actually be focusing on the price. Um, if we try to check it, they'll tell us something like um string that is kind of recognize the string and an integer and stuff like that. So you know the way Godot gives errors very annoying. So I'm gonna actually be wrapping all this in a and a string to var function so it's going to get the it's going to turn the string to a variable okay so i'm going to duplicate this guy just for some reason duplicating this guy and name this guy price 3 well you can do this for as many panels as you have but since i only have two active people like i want to buy um well i'm just going to make it only two so here I'm going to change this panel 2 to panel 3 and everything should be alright. So now, next thing I want to do is I want to be connecting some signals from our panels here. And first I'm going to connect the press signal to our characters and I'm going to name it button 2. Okay, so on button 2 first, we have that. And the, last, the next one is going to be on button 3. And we're going to connect it to the characters. Don't forget, it has to be the characters. Okay. And we're just going to leave those guys for now. Now we're going to make a function um, called by. Well, we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be making many functions in this tutorial series. So we're just going to say, we're going to hit pass for now. So what we want to be doing is this by will actually need. Um, a variable so you say price well it might not be only one but we'll, as we go on in a series we keep increasing the variables and stuff like that so here in the past um sorry when button 2 is pressed we want to call the buy function and we're going to say price 2 okay we're going to use the price 2 for that and say underscore buy and we're going to use the price 3 now, what we're going to be doing is, when we call the buy function, we want um, to check if um, global.score 
is actually greater than or equal to the price okay so if it's greater than or equal to the price we want to do whatever is in the code so we want to say global dot score dot score minus equals price well we can just hit um, check this out by okay we can just check this out by hitting f5 and i'm just gonna pause the video till i have enough score so i've literally destroyed almost all my um asteroids well i have to fix this score and that should be enough so i'm gonna hit um home sorry hit the enter key and here you can see my cash here 50. well you might not be able to see it through the video so i think i'm gonna style this a little bit and keep it over here and make it bigger or something so if i hit buy um well i basically hit it twice that's why you can see that my cash is now 33 but if i hit it once you can see it turns 20 and 10 and this guy over here um since we don't have up to 20 cash we if i hit it it's not gonna do anything as you can see okay so now we have our basic storage system so before that um, I'm gonna say else okay and I'm gonna make another variable var rem and it's gonna be equal to price minus minus global dot score so what this is gonna do is um, the particular price is going to subtract it from the global score okay and that will be the RAM so we just want to print this out for a test run print T and it's going to be the RAM that we're printing so we're just going to F6 this um, and we're going to shift our store over to the left here and as you can see when I hit this it's going to show you the amount of score that is remaining for you um, if I hit this to show you the amount of score that you need to get before you can buy this guy well I'm just going to go ahead and let's see do this guy and when I hit this one of 20 cash it actually shows me a 10 that means trying to tell me that I need to get 10 more to buy that guy so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make a new node this is going to be like our uh, let's say insufficient funds node okay so it's basically just going to be a color rect color rect um, so guys, guys don't be scared of we're going to style this off, um, off video so it's going to be totally black well I'm going to reduce the alpha a little bit so I can just see the back okay and we're going to increase its size something something like this okay and we're going to be adding um, a label to this guy and we're going to be adding a button so that should be all well i'm going to style all these off video so that we actually have time well, I'm done. Um, well, again, I kind of found felt lazy, so um, I just put, give this a font and just left the button the way it is. Well, if you might be wondering why my height here is um, in the center, I just went to a line here and say it's center. That's all, and that should be all we want to do. So now, well, that color rect I actually recommend. Um, that you name it something else like insufficient funds or something like that so we're gonna do um we're gonna hide it for now and when we say else we want to make um colorect colorect label dot text to be equal to um let's say you need You need you need um and we're gonna just say plus str rem then we 
we continue and say points we don't give a space here so by this okay so I think this should be all we want to do and here I'm going to just leave a slash um, backslash n so I go to a new line and save this up and I'm going to run this scene and I hit buy okay yeah there's a problem something we just um, missed I'm going to say color dot show okay I'm going to check it again and when we hit buy you see that it tells us you need 10 coins to buy this okay and when we hit this guy tells us you need 20 coins because our cash right now is zero so um that to do it and another last thing we want to do for this um for this insufficient bond bond stuff is we want to connect the buttons pressed to our characters and we're gonna just say color rect sorry color dot hide so we're gonna be hiding the color X and we're done. So I think this should be all for this tutorial because I guess we're kind of running long. Well, I don't like making my videos too long. So um, I think we'll just carry everything over to the next tutorial. And if you have any questions, you can join me um, on Facebook or on Instagram or hit me up anywhere, anything. Then, or if you're not on any other platforms, you can check um you can leave a question in the comment section below and i'll be happy to help you um now please subscribe um like the video if you like this video sorry smash that like button if you like this video and uh, see you next time in part three thank you and goodbye